Dylan Flanagan? Brian, isn't that your son? I think the answer is yes, based on the size of his eyes. I may need to go to the hospital, but then I'm going to go see Dylan. God, my son starring in a TV show. And, and without even being gay, I hope. No. I kind of thought you wanted nothing to do with me. Okay, Dylan, I, look, I know I wasn't there for you, but look, you turned out fine. You have no daddy issues at all. No! If you take it away, it'll never come back! Okay, there's some. Look, Dad, when we reconnected after all those years, I thought things would be different. But then you disappeared all over again. I know, and, and I'm sorry. It, it, it'll never happen again, I swear. Look, I, I want to make up for that lost time now if you'll give me one more chance. Dylan, will you let me be your father? Yeah. I'd like that a lot. Oh, terrific. You know, this day actually turned out all right. I was a little worried this morning after I had breakfast with my friend Tony, whose wife just left him. Boy, these... these frosted flakes, huh? Yeah, they're... they're great. All right, Dylan, the first rule of barbecue is cooking with mesquite chips. We're gonna have the best barbecue in the neighborhood, Dad. Oh, hi, Brian. Oh, hi, Peter. You remember my son, Dylan? Of course. And I believe you know my boy, Chris. Chris, say hi to Brian. Ah! He's, he's shy. Oh, well, Dylan's just the opposite. In fact, he's starring in a TV show right now. Huh, never heard of it. Hey, show him that dance you do, Chris. Regular Mozart, huh? All right, Chris, let's punch him in the stomach and get out of here. <coughs> oh! I have a better kid! Oh, man, Dad, this day has been so much fun. You bet it has. Hey, what do you say? Weird father-son kiss on the lips? No, but I wish we could hang out more. But I gotta get to set. Set? What, what set? Oh, right, the TV thing. Oh, God, I, I hate for our father-son time to end, too. You know what? I, I could come with you. That would be great. I'd love to have you there. Well, all right, great. Let's do it. My afternoon's totally clear. Hey, Bri, it's Dewey again. Uh, still waiting for you to pick me up. It is 6 p.m. now. My contemporaries have left, and the big kids have taken over. Fortunately, they haven't noticed me. Who's the little dweeb? Okay, hurry up. Hey, Dad, you made it! My big scene is next! Yeah, I read it. I, you know, I, I had no idea you were playing a girl. What? I'm not playing a girl. Oh, really? Because the dialogue is very girly. It's uh, very effeminate. Mincing, almost. Well, what do I do? How can we change that? Hmm. Well, uh, which writers are the ones that you hired? What? I didn't hire any writers. What? Every star needs his own writer. You know, someone close to him who's only got his interest at heart. All of Frazier's writers were his kids. Hell, Sarah Jessica Parker had her grandchildren writing for her on Sex and the City. Wait, you're a writer? Well, I, I used to be before my job became fatherhood. Couldn't you be that person for me? What? Me? Write for my son? Huh. Well, wouldn't be the craziest idea in show business. Hey, what's the, what's the rule of writers dating underage actresses? Statutory rape. Right, but, th but there's no, like, in-house rule. The point is, Dad, you keep doing whatever you want, and I'm getting in trouble for it. What? So, so that's it? You're just abandoning me? I'm abandoning you? You abandoned me for 18 years! You know, this, this may not be a good time for notes, but where was this emotion when the camera was rolling? Yeah, you know what, Lois? That's true. I'm a great conversationalist. That's how I got my job as an NFL analyst on Fox. Kurt Menefee here at halftime, and Peter... I think we're all pretty impressed about the offensive display we saw down on the field. Uh-huh. The Falcons are one of the highest scoring teams in the NFL. Uh-huh. And they're going up against one of the toughest defenses, but they're finding a way to get it done. How do you think they're doing it? Do you have your suits made by some circus tent company? You are the biggest human being I have ever seen in my entire life. Stupid boring meeting. I don't even want to be here. I'd rather be Philip Glass blowing. This is Philip Glass. You should probably cut to something else now. Uh-oh, I haven't said anything in a while. I better just laugh and say, boy, you said it. <laughs> boy, you said it! Something funny about our annual donation to the Rape Crisis Center, Griffin? Oh, no, no, no I, I thought you said Ape Crisis Center. I, I was thinking about monkey problems. Okay, that fooled nobody. No one will ever know about this. I'm good at getting rid of evidence. Peanut, were you masturbating? <laughs> Prove it. I'm not gonna die, Brian. And if I did, you just press the reset button. And if that doesn't work, you take the game out, blow in it a couple of times, and then put it back in slowly. 
And if that doesn't work, take it out again, rub it in between your hands to warm it up, and then put it back in slowly again. Grab another game, jam that one in on top of the other game, hit power and reset at the same time, and cross your fingers. Stewie, I don't think the kids are going to get that one. That one is for the parents, Bri. Boy, I hope my mom didn't have any regrets. I know I got a few. Hey, Peter. You should pinch that lady's fanny. Nah, I'll do it later. I should have pinched that fanny. The time to pinch has passed me by. Look at this 1940s tampon. I know. Isn't that something? That's how they used to do it back then. It's just sawdust in a burlap sack. You had to jump on it from a second floor window. We'll take it to Gross Will. Oh, here's me getting my first haircut. Here's me getting my 351st haircut. And here's when I couldn't take no more. I killed that barber. It's weird being here without Grandma. I keep thinking she's gonna walk through that door any minute. Oh, honey, I, I know, but I'm afraid she's dead. This is real life, not some magical fairy tale. And so the beautiful prom queen was blessed with child until one enchanted car trip to a strip mall near the TJ Maxx from whence she returned unpregnant. And the evil stepfather's secret was safe forever until the whole damn thing happened again to her younger sister. Okay, wait, 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 look, 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 look. There's, there's something about death that I didn't tell you before because kids aren't supposed to know about it till they get older. Ooh, an adult secret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, when someone dies, uh, they, they actually do go somewhere. Uh, uh, heaven. Really? What's it like? Well, first of all, you can have any hairstyle you want instantly. You, you don't have to go through that awkward growing it out phase. But do you still get to go to the salon? Of course, you have to get it set. And everyone in heaven only speaks English. None of those mumbly, yelly languages. What about clicky, flemmy ones? No, nope, none of those either. And every corner has a fire and ten fire engines putting it out. Do they have a person to ring the bells? No, they need someone to do that. Oh, that's my thing! All right, here I come! Well, wait, hang on. You, you, you can't kill yourself, though, because, because they don't let you in if you do that. So Brody Jenner's not going to be there. What? He didn't kill himself. He didn't? Oh, no. So he's choosing to live as Brody Jenner? That's so sad. Uh, did you just do an old lady fart? No, that wasn't me. Oh my god, my mother's cat's still alive. Quick, I gotta get a shovel. Peter, wait. We'll both get a shovel. That was an old lady fart. Well, I'm glad everything's back to normal. Peter, your mother's dead. Yeah, but at least she's alive. What are you talking about, Peter? Well, you see, Lois, the key in life is to lie to yourself about reality. Smile through everything. All the bad things, well, you just pile them away in a place that will come back one day in the form of, I don't know, rage? <laughs> but everything's fine. I'll see you in bed. Hey, y'all. Good to be back in town. Oh, crap. I wore my loafers. Now I'm gonna have to do that weird tiny step slide and walk the entire way in. <laughs> Quagmire, would you mind if I take your arm so you may escort me into the game? Ugh, fine. Oh, there's a puddle. <sighs> Thank you, young man. <sighs> How was your night, Stewie? Oh, you know, I went to a concert at the library. The guy opened with an 18-minute old McDonald. It was epic. But getting out of there was a nightmare. Sarah Palin credits her success to personal relationship with God. Well, if she knows him, maybe she can tell us where he is. Exactly. Guys, we're going to Alaska. Right, right, Alaska. Welcome to Alaska, gentlemen. It's very nice to meet you. Thanks for seeing us on such short notice, Mrs. Palin. Yeah, as someone who served one half of one term as governor of a largely unpopulated state, we really respect your opinion. Well, how could I refuse an interview with important big newspaper illustrated? See, I told you that would work. Say it. Say I was right. Peter, we're in the middle of fooling the person we're trying to fool right now. This has become more important than that. Say I was right. So what brings you gentlemen to Alaska? 
Well, I read an article where you said you had a personal relationship with God. Now, most of the time when women say personal relationship, that means Bone City, but I'm not, I'm not here to pry about that. I just want to know where he lives. Why, God lives in our own hearts, and we take him with us wherever we go. Yeah, well, that's kind of general. Can you be a little more specific? Sure feels like God's here with us on this beautiful day, doesn't it, folks? Something's off about her. She's not even real! She's the animatronic moose from Wally World! <laughs> Sorry, folks. Alaska's closed. Sorry! <laughs> we now return to Sad Men. It's 1963, and I don't like my wife. Oh my god, look you guys, it's death! Hey, has anyone got a cell phone I can borrow? God's been paging me for like 20 minutes. Wait, you still use a pager? Yeah, well, we thought once we got Steve Jobs in heaven we'd all get iPhones, but he never showed up. Wait a minute. You work with God? Oh, Death, we've been looking all over for that guy. Will you take us to him? Sure, but don't you mean her? <laughs> Look at your faces. Of course it's the dude. Come on, let's go. Wow, you guys pulled it off. And we only spent $800. Here's our receipts. What? I'm not, I'm not reimbursing you. Oh, I'm sorry, but I promised a fish I'd take him christening. Oh, boy, the Chris are jumping today. Will you at least give me an empty promise for the road? Tomorrow we'll go scuba diving. Yay! I'll get started on the six weeks of required certification classes. Well, as I understand it, Daddy's cheer squad had another failed dismount. We know that we are the B E S T. <laughs> ah! Ah, Brittany, you dumb slut! I said I was gonna cradle out! How did you not hear me? Actually, Mom can't take care of him. I had no idea, but for the past four months, she's been one of the judges on American Idol. Wow, you know, eventually they get to everybody. It's like jury duty now. I agree with the black girl carnival. You what? Oh, my! And I'll close the door, because no one does that in this house. That's right, Chris is my new heir. And now to show you my overwhelming love and affection. Okay, that's enough, you're not my wife. Anyway, I want you to have the money. You're the only person who understands this crazy world, except for maybe Anne way too frank. Dear Diary, when this war is over, I'm gonna get a cucumber and work it into a pickle. And you can take that to the Bank of Berlin. Phew, good thing no one's ever gonna read this. Hey Joe, can you stop tagging me on Facebook with you every time we're together? What, why do you do that? Are you just, you just bragging about being with me? No, I'm just showing people that we're having a good time. Yeah, well stop it. Nobody else tags me. Makes it seem like you're the only person I hang out with. Why is your hand moving up and down in your pocket so fast? Because I'm looking. For this. I guess what I'm trying to say, Dad, is that I want to spend the rest of my life with you at... You know what? I'm gonna be a bachelor. Let people talk. I know I'm straight. Hello? Quagmire, I think I'm making a big mistake. And after tomorrow, there's no going back. I, I just don't know. Peter, Peter, Peter. What you're feeling right now is completely normal. Really? Of course it is. If everybody who had doubts on the eve of his wedding threw in the towel, nobody would be married. And look, I'm not saying it isn't scary. It is. Well, you're not married. And I'm not happy either. What? You seem like the happiest guy in the world. It's a mask, Peter. Now you go back to bed. And when you feel the breeze on your ears tomorrow... That's Glenn Quagmire telling you that everything's gonna be okay. Thanks, Quagmire. You're a good man. I hope someday we can talk about marriage. <laughs> yeah, when I get married, it's not gonna be to some whore. Well, we took a chance being married outdoors and it paid off. I like that I'm marrying a risk taker. On this most special of days, who gives this young man away? Uh, I do. Very good. And to whom will he be married? Uh, me again. What? For real? Yeah. 
Uh, okay. Uh, should we just move along to the vows, then? Chris, I still remember the first time I laid eyes on you. I was standing before a studio audience at the Maury Povich show, having just taken a blood test. And when those rednecks were screaming boo at me in that crappy brick studio, and that fat lady threw a cup of water at me, that's when I knew you were mine, and that we would be together forever. Amen. Let's all go home. Well, we did already pay for the honeymoon. Ah, Perry. Mom sure looked pissed at the airport. 